خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا السلام علیکم و بینوی علی میسیون ست سمن ادک لے کالیف Nous avons l'honneur de vous présenter les points forts d'une rencontre avec les membres de la Lejna Imaïla du Bangladesh. Nous vous présenterons également une interview de sa sainteté le Caldif par M. Lat Blélok, rédacteur du magazine Henri Today. Nous débutons par la rencontre de dimanche au cours de laquelle sa sainteté le 5e Caldif a rencontré des étudiantes et des diplômés Ahmadi du Bangladesh. Dimanche dernier, des étudiantes et des diplômés de la Lajna Imaïla du Bangladesh, rassemblés à la mosquée d'Arut Tablir à Barshi Bazar à Dhaka, ont pu participer à une rencontre virtuelle avec sa sainteté, le cinquième calife, qu'Allah soit son soutien. Après une session formelle qui a débuté par une tilawa, un hadith, un extrait des écrits du Messie premier l'Islam et un poème, les Lajna ont pu poser des questions sur divers sujets à sa sainteté, le calife. My name is Fiza Ahmed. I am currently studying Bachelor of Science in Zoology. Huzur, I want to know how students can study the Holy Quran alongside their usual studies. How can we research the Holy Quran and science side by side? You see, being a Muslim, you should uh, recite the Holy Quran daily. And while doing Tilawat, you should uh, also read the translation of it alongside. Then you will know what you are reading from the Holy Quran. And apart from that, you are studying zoology. Then you try to find out the verses from the Holy Quran, which are uh, related to science and the existence of the human being and the life on the earth, then you can study and relate those verses with your subject. And then this is how you can get more enlightened about your subject from the Holy Quran. So you'll have to give some time on this and read some uh, commentaries on it. If you cannot read Urdu, there is only one detailed commentary to some extent, detailed commentary of five volume. So you can read the five volume uh, commentary of the Holy Quran. And there are quite a number of articles and speeches and discourses by Muslim Maud. They have been translated into English. You can read those one. Then you should listen to the khutbas of the Khulafas and their speeches as well. You, there you can also find out some related subjects Right? We often write to you asking, asking for your valuable advice, opinions, or decisions on various matters. But what should we do if the letter carrying your valuable suggestions doesn't reach us within the stipulated time? Then, in that case, you should just uh, do whatever you feel better or appropriate for you. You see, if it, the matter is about uh, getting admission in some particular subject, and you are asking that, should I get uh, admission in this subject or not? Or should I take these subjects in my bachelor's courses or master's courses? And you do not get letter on time. Then whatever decision you make, you should make it on your own and just get the admission instead of wasting time and waiting for my advice to come to you. And if you receive letter later on, and my opinion or my advice is different from that of what you have selected or you have done, then don't worry, just write to me that since my letter reached late to you and the time was short, 
This is why you had already selected the subject and you are doing now this thing. So I will say, okay, no problem. You can continue with this. जोर मेरा सवाल ये है कि अक्सर हमारे मुआरे में देखा जाता है कि लड़कियां शादी के बाद अपनी पढ़ाई जारी नहीं रख पाती है जबकि उन्हों में काबिलत भी बहुत ज़्यादा होती है तो इन हालत में लड़की अगर कुछ देर से शादी करे तो क्या ये बात मुनासिब होगी क्योंकि कभी कभार देखा जाता है कि शादी के पहले लड़के वाले तो ये कह देते हैं कि शादी के बाद लड़की अपनी पढ़ाई जारी रख सकती है मगर शादी के बाद वो इजाज़त नहीं देते तो इस सूरत हाल में क्या करना चाहिए बात यह है कि अगर अच्छा रिश्ता मिल जाए तो शादी कर लेनी चाहिए जल्दी और उसमें अगर ज़्यादा पक्का करना है तो लड़के से और खानदान से ये बॉन्ड लिखवा लें कि अगर टैलेंट है तो शादी के बाद पढ़ाई करूँगी और पढ़ाई भी अगर किसी ऐसी सब्जेक्ट में करनी है जिसका कोई बेनिफिट है इंसानियत को फिर तो ठीक है अगर सिंपल हिस्ट्री में एम ए करना है या किसी ऐसे सब्जेक्ट में करना है जिसकी कोई ऐसी ज़्यादा वैल्यू नहीं है इस लिहाज से कि उससे कोई इंसानियत को कोई बेनिफिट नहीं पहुँच रहा सवाय इसके अगर टीचर बन जाना है तो इसलिए वो तो करने की ज़रूरत कोई नहीं थी लेकिन अगर कोई डॉक्टर बन रहा है कोई इंजीनियर बन रहा है और मेडिकल करते हुए या इंजीनियरिंग के कोर्स करते हुए इस दौरान में कोई अच्छा रिश्ता आ जाता है तो फिर ये बेहतर है कि शादी कर लो और उनसे बॉन्ड लिखवा लो कि हम ये बाद में पढ़ाई करने दोगे ठीक है बाद दफ़ा ये भी होता है कि इस दौरान में बच्चा भी पैदा हो जाता है और बच्चा पैदा हो जाए तो फिर उसको संभाल नहीं सकते उसमें फिर ये है कि फिर थोड़ा सा ब्रेक ले लें और ब्रेक के बाद फिर कंटिन्यू कर लें यूनिवर्सिटी से या कॉलेज से अपना यहाँ यूरोप में तो इस तरह हो जाता है बांग्लादेश में पता नहीं इस तरह होता है कि नहीं तो आगे कंटिन्यू कर सकते हैं बाद में स्टडीज अपनी तो पहली प्रेफरेंस घर है किसी ख़ास प्रोफेशन में जाना है जिसका कोई बेनिफिट है इंसानियत को फिर तो ठीक है कंटिन्यू करो स्टडी नहीं तो घर को संभाल लो ज़्यादा बेहतर है मेरा सवाल ये है कि वो लड़कियाँ जिनके खावन वाकफ ज़िंदगी है उनको किन मजामी में पढ़ाई करनी चाहिए और किस किस्म के पेशा चुनना चाहिए कोई ज़बरदस्ती को इम्पोज तो नहीं किया जा सकता किसी के ऊपर तुमने ज़रूर ये पढ़ाई करनी है तो जो भी इंटरेस्ट है सब्जेक्ट में उसमें पढ़ाई करें साथ ये भी याद रखें कि अगर वाकफ ज़िंदगी है खामन और मुबलग है मुरबी है तो उसके साथ मुरबी और मुबलग की बीवी को भी दीनी इलम हासिल करने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए एक तो अपनी नमाज़ों की हिफाजत करनी चाहिए ताकि बच्चों की सही तरबियत भी हो उनके लिए दुआ हो फिर कुरान शरीफ बायदा पढ़ना चाहिए उसका तर्जमा पढ़ने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए फिर दीनी इलम सीखने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए फिर अला अखलाक होने चाहिए ताकि जमात के मम्बरान की अगर मुरबी की बीवी है तो तरबियत कर सके अगर वाकफ ज़िंदगी किसी और पेशे में है तो तब भी दीनी इलम हासिल करने की कोशिश करनी चाहिए अला अखलाक होना चाहिए तो असल चीज़ ये है कि पहले सही अहमदी मुसलमान बनो उसके लिए अपनी नमाज़ों की हिफाजत करो कुरान करीम की तलावत करो बायदा उसका तर्जमा सीखो फिर दीनी इलम सीखो ठीक है और बच्चों की सही तरह तबीयत करो अब अच्छे अखलाक दिखाओ और लोगों को अपने अच्छे अखलाक से मुतासर करो अहमदियों को भी और गैरों को भी तो ये एक वक्फ ज़िंदगी की बीवी का असूल है एक अच्छी अहमदी औरत का असूल है तो बस पहली चीज़ तो यही है बाकी कैरियर तो अगर मौका मिलता है कैरियर बनाने का तो बना लो नहीं मिलता है तो घर जो है वो सबसे बड़ी चीज़ है वहाँ रह के तो अपने बच्चों को संभालो और उनकी अला तरबियत करो ताकि उनको अच्छा अहमदी मुसलमान और अच्छा शहरी बनाओ ठीक है जी हजूर माई सिस्टर गॉड एडमिटेड ड्यूरिंग हर प्रेगनेंसी ड्यू टू डिले इन फॉर्मेलिटीज शी वॉज फाइनली एडमिटेड टू द आई सी यू बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली शी लॉस्ट हर चाइल्ड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस फॉर्मेलिटीज हजूर हजूर बींग एन अहमदी वोमेन हुई वन शुड वी गिव प्रायोरिटीज इन मेडिकल प्रोफेशन मोरलिटी और लॉ You see, the first thing is to save the life of the person, not the formality. So, formalities can be done later on. The first preference should be 
to save the life of the person. This is the ethics and this is the doctor's duty. And this is the true action taken by a doctor that he should show good morals. As I have already said, morality is the first preference. Professional ethics is the first preference. Both requires that uh, the patient should be given priority for the treatment instead of taking time on completing the formalities of admission and this and that. That is wrong. So those doctors who are after formalities and do not take care of their patient immediately and do not show sympathy to the, their patients, they are not doctors, they are butchers. So whatever they have done, it was wrong. The first preference of a doctor should be the value of a human life, not the formality of the administration. Then now time is over and Allah Hafiz. Monsieur Lat Blilok, rédacteur du magazine Henri Today, a interviewé sa sainteté le cinquième calife qu'Allah soit son soutien pour un article sur l'islam et sur la méthode pour enseigner la religion aux jeunes. L'interview s'est tenue dans le bureau du calife à Islamabad. I know your holiness that you yourself are a, a head teacher of a school in Ghana. I know that you are uh, a, 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 an, an, education, an educator yourself. I would love to hear um, something of the ways in which you practiced Islamic principles in the education that you were involved with as a, as a school leader. Uh, uh, that would be most interesting. Our schools are just secular schools and all the secular subjects are taught there. Religious knowledge and Islamic religious knowledge. Even uh, to your surprise, and it was also to my surprise that when I went in one of our schools, only BK, Bible knowledge, was being taught there in that school, yes. not Islamic religious knowledge. Right. So when I went there, I started it. And uh, quite a number of people were afraid of studying Islamic religious knowledge. So I told them that I will teach them. So I taught them whatever the prescribed syllabus was and fortunately, the very first year, almost all the students had good grades in Islamic religious knowledge. And that encouraged other Christian students as well. So next year, they came to me that instead of taking Bible knowledge, they will study Islamic religious knowledge. Hmm? So see, this is how, if you are teaching them properly, they are encouraged. So it all depends on the teacher as well. Otherwise, we should start our school in an assembly. We shall start with prayers. And since it was a secular school, then Islamic prayers and Bible prayers as well. So more than 80% of our students in Africa are Christian school students. They are not Muslims. Yeah. Even more than that. Yeah. We are very open. We start our assemblies with the prayers, Bible prayers and Islamic prayers. And they, this is how they, they liked it. And then they understand how open Islamic religion is. So, but it was not being done by Christian schools there. Even if a Muslim student enters a primary school, they will change the name of the student. They will give them Christian name. So or in other way, they are, it, the, those students or those peoples are baptized <laughs> forcefully. <laughs> Le journaliste a évoqué la mauvaise représentation de l'islam dans les médias et il a demandé au calife comment les musulmans Ahmadi présentent le véritable message de l'islam. Whenever I say something about peace, I normally quote the verses of the Holy Quran or the tradition of the Holy Prophet sallallahu which are according to the teaching of the Holy Quran. This is how we can do it. You see, if we are giving the true teaching of Islam, explaining the true teaching of Islam, and it is being portrayed by your actions as well, then this stereotype Islam will be removed. And this is what we have been doing. This is why quite a number of non-Muslims appreciate our actions. 
They say that your teaching of Islam is quite different, not only in here in the UK, in South America, in North America, in Africa, in Asia, everywhere. One thing is common among all the Amdi Muslims, that we believe in the Holy Quran and the Sunnah, and we try to practice all these teachings. And this is why we are not joining the extremist groups. We are not violating the laws of the land. We are always humble and we try to create peace in the society. So, so you will have to set your own example. Only teaching cannot do anything. There are quite a number of good teachings. Even all the religions have good teachings, but they are not being practiced. Le journaliste a également interrogé le calife sur le développement durable et les questions humanitaires comme la lutte contre la faim et la pauvreté. You see, Allah Ta'ala has made this world. That is what we believe. And He is all merciful. He is the provider and sustainer of His creation. He says in the Holy Quran that He is the one who provides food to the animals and to you as well. So there is a potential here in this world to grow more food for the people, for his creation, whoever needs food. If we are disturbing the balance by cutting the trees, climate change and carbon emission and so many other things, and we are not taking the remedial measures to correct whatever we have done to imbalance the, our world, then it is not Allah's fault. In Africa, there is a vast land which can be utilized for producing food for the world. There is a vast land in America even, in South North America, South America, in Asia. If proper plan is made, and uh, if we love each other, if we love our Creator and discharge our duty we owe towards each other, His creation, then there can be a consolidated plan and program to grow more food. We shall try not to let any person die of hunger. But here what is happening, that if we have excess food, we throw it into the sea. We waste our dairy product. We waste our agricultural produce instead of giving to the hunger-stricken people in third world countries. So this is the, our lack of interest in helping the people of the world. If the rich countries, rich people are discharging their duties and giving their due rights to the private people, this is Islamic teaching is to show sympathy to others and feed others. Islam doesn't say that uh, there should be socialism. What it says that you must be careful in providing food to every person, to your neighbor. Islam says you, that your neighbor has the right. And the, the definition of the labor is it can extend up to the 40 houses. And neighbors are those who are working with you. Not only the neighbors living in your area or vicinity, but the laborers who are working in your field, in your workplaces, in your factories. The neighbors are those who are traveling with you, right? So in this way, you can have a very wide range of neighbors. And if you are taking care of all your neighbors, then this is how you can save the world. Not only providing food, but also can create peace. You speak, uh, you speak with great hope. Uh, uh, some people, when they speak about our environmental crisis, are almost in despair. But you've emphasized, if we love one another, we can save the world. Le journaliste a également interrogé sa sainteté le calife sur ses sentiments pour l'avenir, vu la persécution des musulmans ahmadis dans certains pays. See, the thing is that uh, our work is a missionary work. And you cannot achieve your goals within a short period of time. None of the religious uh, organizations or the prophets achieved their goal within a short period of time or even in their lifetime. So, so we believe that as the time goes on and we, shall, we are seeing the result. 
every year hundreds and thousands of people are joining us from among Muslims, from pagans, from other religions. So gradually and slowly we are growing. And one day we shall inshallah be recognized by the people of the world. Even we are being recognized today, this is why you are here. Well, <laughs> indeed, I am. And <laughs> yes. I've learned. I'm learning so much. See, that one man who started his community from a small town, small village even, is Kadiyan in India, remote part of India where there was no access of road or rail or anything. And his community is now has spread over 200 countries. So, we are growing. As we are growing, we hope one day, but majority who will accept Ahmadiyya Islam and those who will not, at least they will stop opposing us furiously as they are doing it now. Right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> your Holiness, can I thank you for your time today? Uh, I'm so delighted to have been able to hear from you uh, words of wisdom and uh, words of insight. Um, I will do my very best to make this uh, conversation into uh, a resource for young people in religious education in school. He's been able to give me there some very uh, profound insights into the teachings of the Prophet and into the teachings of the Holy Quran, but also to make those really practical in relation to uh, what, what pupils might do, what young people might do in the coming generation as they face uh, the, these environmental crises. And then I've wanted to ask him about uh, the work of Ahmadiyya Muslim communities in peacemaking and he's had uh, uh, some, well, some tremendous examples to share there of how uh, the Prophet's example of, of uh, leading peacefully uh, is translated into the contemporary world. And then I wanted to ask him as well about uh, spirituality and the ways, in which, um, the ways in which young people in particular perhaps can find their true humanity uh, in, in the service of God. And he's spoken to us there, spoken very uh, wonderfully about uh, uh, the importance for young people of finding their right relationship with their Creator. C'était là les points forts de quelques-unes des activités du calife au cours de la semaine écoulée. Nous terminons par le résumé du sermon du vendredi. Dans son dernier sermon du vendredi, sa sainteté le calife Kalla, sans son soutien, s'est apesanti sur les qualités du Saint-Coran. Vers la fin de son sermon, sa sainteté le calife a fait une requête de prière en faveur des armadis de Bangladesh et en faveur de ceux qui sont persécutés ailleurs dans le monde. अभी तक की खबर आई है उसके मुताबिक और कितना नुकसान हुआ अभी पूरा अंदाजा नहीं अल्लाह ताला एमडीओ को भी महफूज रखे इनके शर से और इनकी पकड़ के भी सामान करे तो इनके लिए कोई हदायत की दुआ तो नहीं हो सकती अल्लाह व मजिकुम कुल्ला व मजक इन सायकुम तसीका वली दुआ ही है मुंह से निकलती है दिल से निकलती है इसी तरह पाकिस्तान के हालात के लिए भी दुआ करें अल्लाह ताला वहां भी एमडीओ को हालात ठीक रखे Bukina Faso may be Hatarata Vimulare, Vahakili Dokare, Hidran Al Jazair may be Bazmukad Mata and Diope, Unkili Bidokare, Alatala Hajaga, and the Humafuzrake, Bangladesh may, Jazagamanaka, and Samyane, Hamayaka, Taki of Fikarna Koro, Jal Sakoro, or Hampuri Fazas Karenge, Lakin Jabirwai or Dashgar Shitapasan Mulla, Tolongo Lake, I am. तो पुलिस वहां खड़ी तमाशाई बनके बैठी हुई है और कोई उत्तम नहीं कर रही बहरहाल हमें अल्लाह ताला की तरफ झुकना चाहिए अल्लाह ताला से दुआ मांगनी चाहिए अल्लाह ताला हमारे इन भाइयों की मुश्किलात को जल्द दूर फरमाए